Oh look, a new video from Triple Jump. Wait, where have I heard that before? Oh come on, they stole my theme! And they've only been using it since... Oh, I guess I stole their theme. Looks like I need a new one. Hey Liz? Yes, Jeremy? Could you help me out? Sure, I'd love to. Thanks, Liz. Anytime. This is Brand New Relic, the monthly series where I finally play the classic games I never got to try. It's the month of February. Romance is in the air, love is on everyone's mind. What better time for, you know, gore and blood and carnage? Yes, yeah, spoiler alert for Doom, I guess? For one thing, there's not a lot to spoil, and also, you know, it's Doom. It's been around since I was 11, which was... Oh man, which was 28 years ago. Good gravy, I'm old. On the list of the most influential video games of all time, you'd be remiss if you left Doom off of your list. Remiss, I'd say. Remiss! This game seems to have been around since forever, but I never got around to playing it because in 1993 I didn't have... Let's see, a computer, or a 32X, or a Jaguar, or a Mac, or a PC-98. Or a Super Nintendo, or a PlayStation, or a 3DO, or a Sega Saturn, or... What's the Acorn Archimedes? Alright. I went through the 90s not having any of the many ways to play Doom. I also went through the 90s thinking this was a good look. So for me, Doom had always been this mythical figure, the ultra-violent shooter that was literally hell-bent on corrupting my poor, young, fragile mind from the wholesomeness of NBA Jam. And when I finally had the means to play it, the world had already moved on to Half-Life. So, you know, I played Half-Life. But now it's time to see if this game is going to turn me into every 90s parent's worst nightmare. I know that Doom was the creation of id Software, who also made Quake and Wolfenstein, and was co-run at the time by John Romero, who at one point wanted to make me his bitch? I know it takes place on Mars, or hell, or both, and I know it has a sequel, and a threequel, and a remake, and a sequel to the remake, and a movie starring two guys named Carl and Dwayne, and that it was so addicted back in the day that companies had to tell their employees not to play it during work hours. Its look is so iconic that I could easily pick it out of a lineup. But now, I'm experiencing it up close and personal. It's episodic? So I'm binging Doom? Right, this was an example of shareware, with the first episode initially being offered for free. How nice of this ultra-violent game. So I guess let's start with Knee Deep in the Dead, which I imagine makes it difficult to walk. And wow, way to challenge shame me. I'll choose Hurt Me Plenty, I guess, as there doesn't really seem to be a story mode here. Yeah, indeed, let's just get right to it. Backstory is for suckers. Right out of the starting gate, I get this song, which is quite the banger. And plenty of health and armor to start me out, which is awfully considerate. I can't look up and down, but it's okay, because my gun can hit whoever's in front of me regardless of height. It's not very realistic, but, you know, neither is this guy. I get to the exit pretty quickly, and... Wait, there were secrets? Ow, there were only like three rooms in this whole level. So then I go to a nuclear plant, which seems like the worst place to be firing guns, but here we go. I pick up a shotgun, and I love this guy's face when I get a new weapon. Teehee! <laughs> and I just realized that I can have up to eight arms? Am I an octopus? Wait, am I Dr. Octopus? Nothing will stand in our way! Nothing! Someone should really change the fluorescent lights in this place. Can someone contact maintenance? There's a mini-map, which I'm using way too much of. And what kind of place just has a pool of poison lying around? There's a creepy blue orb just looking at me. Hey, did anyone tell you it's not polite to stare? And wow, shirts must be very difficult for this face torso guy. Whoa, okay, this game has jump scares. Good to know. I find a secret group full of men. Uh, uh, take care of these men. Yes, give them all my address. Well, I, I go to a toxin refinery. Again, not a great place to be firing weapons. Much like every escape room I've done, I'm having a hard time locating any secrets, and much like every time I've golfed, I'm way over par. And then... Now I have a machine gun. Oh, oh, oh. And oh, great, cool, some monsters are invisible, that's wonderful. 
Just a nice relaxing time with a bunch of jump scares and invisible monsters. And I love the sound this guy makes when he tries to interact with a wall. I know he's a grunt, but that's just ridiculous. And it turns out I'm on the surface of Phobos, which, as we all definitely know, is the personification of fear and panic in Greek mythology. Oh, wait, no, it's a moon orbiting Mars. That makes more sense. I make my way from level to level, fighting the same handful of monsters before... Okay, this hallway is making me nervous. But I'm sure it's fine, and there's nothing to... Oh no, minotaurs! We got minotaurs! I take these guys down, go through a portal, and end on a cliffhanger? Time for the next episode, The Shores of Hell, which are just lovely this time of year. This time I'm on Deimos, which I don't need to tell you is the personification of terror. What psychopath named these moons? Henry Madden, what's your deal? What do you have to be so scared of? Oh dang, Henry, my apologies, I stand corrected. And hold on, I lost all my ammo? Stupid portals, you can never count on them to get your luggage to your destination. I get a fun warping mechanic, and oh, it's the floaty head guy, I recognize him. And that's what the blue orb does. That's super helpful. Sorry I judged you, you creepy creeper. I was working in the lab late one night. And there's something about this place that's a bit gothy, a bit Satan-y, a bit seventh level of hell-y, including this wild wallpaper. There are even more jump scares. I get invulnerability, which turns me into a strip of negatives at a one-hour photo store, and then... Oh, ho, 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 this is going to be so satisfying. Or maybe not. It is making it easier to conserve ammo, though, and maybe I can make some firewood later. Then I'm at the Tower of Babel, so do I get to learn a language? Because I've been struggling with the Danish course on Duolingo, and I could use some help. Dang it! This level is feeling very final bossy. And this guy is a beast! A literal beast! I take him down, and wow, I'm above hell? I'm just rappelling down to hell? This was not in the job description. That's two chapters down, two to go, and... Wait, Robert Altman is the head of Zenimax? I loved Cookie's Fortune! The next episode is called Inferno, which I definitely pretended to read in my freshman English class. So now I'm in Hell, which is... this suggestive picture. Wait, I can walk through walls? Hell's got some weird perks. I'm at the Slough of Despair. Yeah, tell me about it, I just lived through the year 2020. Before going into Pandemonium. Yeah, tell me about it, I just lived through the year 2020. And then the House of Pain. Yeah, tell me about it, I just lived through the- Okay, I can't keep doing this. I get something called the BFG, so it's the Big Friendly Giant? It's very powerful, much like the Big Friendly Giant, so I'm gonna hold on to it for now. You need some help there, buddy? Aw, he seems nice. Then I'm in Limbo, which looks very different from the last time I was there. I enter Dis, where I guess they just say mean things about you? And why is there circuitry in hell? I take on Spider Krang, and that's why I saved the BFG. Seriously, why did they name this weaponry after a road doll story? It's not a friendly giant, it's just a big fu- Oh, okay, I get it now. So hell is defeated, I get to go back to Earth, and it looks like everything is back to- Thumper, no! So I finished the core game of Doom, but there's an extra episode, Thy Flesh Consumed. Ooh, pulling out the old King James for this one. And wow, the difficulty on this one is really amped up. So I'm bumping it down to what I say every time I go to the dentist. The levels here are a lot more intricate, and also Bible-themed? Why didn't they teach this in Sunday school? I take way too long rocket dueling with this Minotaur guy. I should really learn these villain names. And then again, I was wise to save the BFG. What's Gibitude? Alright, I guess that makes sense. And wait, everything in this episode was because they killed my rabbit? The biblical references, the return to hell, was this all because of Daisy? I mean, it's super cute, I get it. So that's Doom. Oh, wait, let's see what the nightmare difficulty is like. Yeah, no thanks. All in all, it's not a very long game, and the unscreen definitely sets itself up for a sequel. So I'm gonna play it! Doom 2 Hell on Earth was released in 1994 on all these platforms. No Acorn Archimedes here. So let's try it out, what the hell? What the hell, cause, you know, we're in hell, is, yeah, I'm awesome. As you can guess, it's like hell, but on Earth now. I start out by already finding the chainsaw. Fortune favors the curious, I guess. Also, this song is rather chill compared to the opening track of Doom 1. There's also something called the Super Shotgun, which fires two rounds simultaneously. Kind of like a regular, not super at all, real life shotgun. And who's this skeleton rocket guy? Now, instead of ending episodes, I get these little intermissions, which means I can keep my ammo. 
which is great when facing off against these cutie pies here. The level tricks and traps proves particularly satisfying. I consider myself a pacifist, but there's something about blowing away an entire room full of powerful enemies that just... Wait, what am I saying? Am I condoning violence? Is this game corrupting my young, impressionable mind? Is it time to start blasting Rammstein and telling my parents, STAY OUT OF MY ROOM! GOD! Where was I? The levels in Doom 2 are a lot more open than the first game, which basically means that I get lost. A lot. Even with the minimap, I rarely know where I'm going. But I always end up stumbling into where I need to be, including this guy who likes imitating Shawshank Redemption. And eventually, I win! Humanity has escaped Earth and now I just... wait for death? But I thought I was too young to die. Oh, wait, no, more killing is needed. Thank God. I mean, not thank God. Violence is bad and... satisfying, but bad. Turns out the source of the invasion is in my old hometown. So I head to Post Falls, Idaho, I guess. I, I really don't remember it looking like this. I can make the menu do shave and a haircut. And what a lovely courtyard! Even on the easiest setting, this game is not screwing around. And that's before I get to the level that's just called Gotcha. Except I finished the level, so did they get me? I finish Act 2 and reach the corrupt heart of the city, which in Post Falls, Idaho is... I don't know... the middle school? In order to keep the creatures from coming back to Earth, it looks like it's another trip to hell. Here we go again. I go to Nirvana... ...and do, you know, Doom stuff. Killing monsters, solving puzzles, and... Well, that's it, really. Killing monsters and solving puzzles. Then after a pretty clear warning sign that I'm on the final level, I reach... this guy. Wait, what's he saying? When the dead you must kill me, John Romero. So this thing is John Romero? Who wanted to make me his bitch? I'll be honest, if you ask me to name this terrifying creature, I don't think I'd go with John. Anyway, I have to fire rockets into its head with amazing precision. I eventually take it down and... Yeah, that's a lot of kills. That's so satisfying. To have killed so much in such a short amount of time. Wow, what is this game doing to me? We get a cast list, and okay, finally, I can call these monsters by their proper names, let me go correct that. And wow, shirts must be very difficult for this demon. Oh no, Barons of Hell. We got Barons of Hell. Oh, it's the Paco Demon. I recognize him. And who's this Revenant? And that's Doom 2. Earth is saved, Hell is a wreck, and all in all, it was one crazy summer. And, uh, yeah, that game wasn't very long either. So, should I play Doom 3? Oh, uh, no, I'm good for now. Thanks. I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to love Doom. I acknowledge how influential it was on the gaming landscape, but after 28 years, it couldn't still be fun to play, right? And yet, here I was, surprised at how much I was enjoying playing Doom. Almost three decades later, it's still a game that is fast and furious, just like... Yeah, I don't know, I can't think of anything resembling that. The first game in particular is beautifully designed. Layering on the challenges and teaching me how to play it? Remember when I didn't get any of the secrets in the first level? Watch this moment where I saw a bit of wall that looked just a little bit off and boom! Secret found, check out Sherlock Holmes over here. For a game that is on the surface all about running and gunning, there ends up being a lot more exploration than I expected, which both rewards you with more items and also punishes you with more enemies. Not knowing whether flipping a switch was going to give me ammo, unleash a barrage of enemies, or possibly both at the same time, helped the game feel tense and exciting. That tension is also helped by the way you often hear monsters before you see them. Okay, yes, I hear you, thank you. As well as hearing a door open and not knowing where it is and what's behind it. Gah! What was that? Hello? It raises your blood pressure and makes you carefully look around every corner. It's the Jaws theme of video games, more so than, say, the Jaws video game. And the entire aesthetic of Doom is nothing if not consistent, down to the menu choices being gun noises. Which leads me to... So, okay, I understand that Doom is a first-person shooter that was made during, you know, a different time. But this is definitely not my jam. The whole heavy metal soundtrack, traipsing through hell, making enemies explode in blood, it's just not my thing. Unless it's Hades, then it's very much my thing. But a lot of the other games I played in this series feel more or less timeless. 
Doom is very clearly a product of the 90s, not just in its graphical limitations, but with its overt glorification of violence and gothic imagery, slathered with the kind of language and humor that is meant to be just R-rated enough to appeal to the average suburban white boy teenager. Tapping into the same market that gave us Faces of Death videos and Fred Durst, the kind of market that Beavis and Butthead was trying to satirize, before being embraced by the very thing it was satirizing. It's the perfect representation of a bygone era where people could, you know, try to make you their bitch. On top of that, while the look of the world is certainly fun, there really is just one look. Especially with as many different locations as the two games take you, from moon bases to Earth to Hell itself, the environments themselves felt rather bland. And in the second game in particular, the worlds were so vast that it made it frustrating to find the specific area I needed to go to in order to advance. And even worse, sometimes an essential item was hidden in a secret area, which meant that I'd go around interacting with every wall I could find. <laughs> These are relatively minor complaints in what was otherwise a good time, but if I weren't playing it for the episode, I could easily see myself setting the game aside before getting to the end and just saying, yeah, I get it. Which leads us to... Even if I wouldn't have otherwise finished the game, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed playing Doom. If you've never played it and you're curious, definitely check it out. And if you absolutely loved it, then yeah, play Doom 2. But if you merely liked the first game, you can probably skip the second one. But I'll say, the biggest surprise of the series so far is that, yeah, Doom holds up. Even if you're not a fan of violent video games. Those sweet, sweet, violent video games. Ah, I'm being corrupted! Save me, Lieberman! Like the Grinch who stole Christmas, these violent video games threaten to rob this particular holiday season of a spirit of goodwill. Thanks, man. You know who's the best? My supporters on Patreon. You know who's the extra best? Brianne Shaw and Haley's mom. Do you want to watch this video three days early? Or vote on future episodes? Or get access to bonus content? Then follow your nose to Patreon. You can also follow me on Twitter to get more updates. If you have a game you want to see on this show, leave a comment, and subscribe, and like, and hit the notification bell to find out about future episodes. So many things you can click! The next episode starts at the beginning of my very first miniseries. Look at me going all prestige. So until next time, thank you so much for watching.